we had our walkie on the wrong channel. And so we were just kind of booking it and weren't really thinking about anything else. And we were radioing directions for the record. Yes, we were. The we whole time. We were literally time. calling out direct and turns and directions and anything else. We can call out oncoming car and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and uh, we heard nothing, so we were like, ah, we better pull off. We're probably way out of radio range. And then all of a sudden, the TRX comes roaring behind us, honking. And we've been out of commission and communication for like a solid 45 minutes. And a very, very grumpy Doug <laughs> Dub Dub, I must add. Had a little bit of a toot when he rolled up. <laughs> rolled the window to be down. Fair, <laughs> they've had their walkie turned down to very little. You are so loud on the walkie. The <laughs> Lose the toot, bud. So while the others were on the trail, I was doing this thing called working. I drove lots of cars and did other reviews. I drove a Mermac Nevera, so another quad motor electric thing, this one with 2,000 horsepower. But more importantly to me, honestly, I spent time with my family, dogs, you know, that kind of thing. So it was, it was a really nice break, but I did definitely miss being on the trail. I check Slack every day, even the weekends, which I never do. And I was on call on vacation, which I never am. So, yeah, I was definitely, you know, I had my finger on the pulse of the TAT trip, even though I wasn't here. We've completed five legs, and we're here. We finally made it. This is a, a Cape Blanco or Port Blanco, either one. I'm so excited, I don't even know the name of where the heck we are. But I know it's something Blanco, and I know we're on the coast of Oregon, and I know it's gorgeous, uh, even though it's a bit uh, foggy and uh, misty out here, but hey, we're having a great time. We started this leg in Tremonton, Utah, and we ended in uh, Port Orford, Oregon. It was different, honestly, than the first leg. The first leg was, I mean, it felt like you had the whole thing in front of you, and this one, it was kind of like, you know, we got over all of the hardest stuff. This is just like the final stretch. So, kind of had a different vibe to it, to steal Connor's word that he used a lot. I started, obviously, at the beginning of leg five, uh, which was probably, I would guess, day 34 or something like that. I, again, that's, I don't actually know the number, but I, I could already tell that this was kind of a big deal. I mean, I knew this was a big deal, the whole adventure, but seeing the two trucks in all their dirty ass majestic glory, still dripping with mud, sand falling out of the, some of the frame rails and coated with uh, dust and dirt from all the, uh, the, the previous adventures, it felt really special. I learned Christian was my drive partner for this whole thing. I was really excited because he's a very cool guy. He's super level-headed. Um, he's he's really cool under pressure. I like Connor a lot. I mean, um, you know, he was the best intern that the Motorhead editorial department ever had in my tenure tenure here. Granted, he's the only one, but still, uh, he he was great. Like genuinely great. Like a self-starter, smart guy, loves cars, knows it. I can't wait to see this interview, and he's like ripping me new. Be like, I can't believe I had agreed to go on this trip with Connor. He's just a, a nice guy, um, and I can always count on him to fill any silence. No, but I, I think uh, I was really grateful to work with him here. That's great. I'll be completely honest. I'm not the biggest EV fan. Now that doesn't mean I don't. I think they're bad. I just say for my personal tastes, what I like to drive what I like to do with vehicles. I like vroom vroom, boom boom, all the sounds, all the, the, the revs, all the, the vibrations. I like a worse experience is what I'm saying. I, I fully admit, but outside of that, I absolutely realize and understand that EV is the way forward. Uh, I've already accepted that. I've made peace with it. In the end, what I discovered was one of the most fascinating, phenomenal um, vehicles I've driven in a long time. Here we are. We are in Crescent, Oregon. Uh, it's day, I don't know, they all bunch together. <laughs> they, they generally do. The smoke's so thick, uh, you can, you taste it. There's that sort of ashy taste in your mouth. I, I, this is gonna be disgusting. When I blow my nose, it's like half blood because of the smoke that's, come, that's in, the, in the air. Um, and yeah, we've been battling it basically since we started this leg. Our campsite tomorrow night will be our last night of camping on the TAT, and then I'll put us, it's our last night on the TAT, and we'll put us uh, with our sights on um, on the finish. So, yeah, Port Orford, we are coming. So get ready.
All right, so um, what you got? obviously this is our our route. This is a TAT. Um, we are in where the hell are we? Crescent. Crescent. We're going to Canyonville or near Canyonville, I think. Um, but if you're looking at uh, my actual map, um, is that Gaia? This Gaia. Nice. Yeah, there's wildfires all through the route. So as we can smell all and taste, route? yeah, like. The, now it was a bit smoky. I did say last night. Not yeah, a little yeah. Professional. It is pretty I damn can smoky out here. Still taste it in my mouth this morning. Yeah, it's like a barbecue. Yeah. So I spent some time. I came up with an alternative route. Um, okay. Basically, gets us around all the fires. So yeah, we'll, we'll head around that and uh, you know come up through Grants Pass, get a, a charge in and a lunch stop, and uh, continue on. Yeah, I mean, I know we detoured to avoid the fires, but there's no, no real avoiding the smoke. It was either be at the source of the smoke or deal with the smoke blowing down. Yeah. So I think we made the better decision, even though it really is a bummer yeah. to see this. It's actually really depressing because yeah. everything else around it should be beautiful and green. Yeah. It's like it's almost low enough that you can actually go drive in the lake, which coincidentally my brother-in-law did in Mount Shasta recently. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's not try that in Rivians. I mean, or let's try it. I mean, <laughs> drive in the lake. The electric vehicle is a new frontier. It's not, but it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a frontier that we discovered many years ago. Matter of fact, in the beginning there, in the teens, early teens, there were more electric vehicles than there were gas vehicles. It was easier to own and operate an electric vehicle than it was to operate a gas uh, internal combustion vehicle, uh, considering that you often had to buy gas from a pharmacy. That's how you got it. You bought it in big uh, uh, ceramic jugs. That's how you bought your fuel. Uh, electric vehicles were a lot easier to maintain, a lot easier to drive until finally there was a network of gas stations that came up. So the idea of the electric vehicle has been with us for well over 100 years. But this Rivian and what's coming now with a lot of these electric supercars, these, these electric trucks, these things aren't new. They're just trying to be perfected by companies that are starting to realize the value in answering some of the market's needs and wants. Hello from Canyonville, Oregon. We are in a very pretty, very kind of rugged, very naturey um, hip camp location where for our second to last night on the road with the Rivian R1Ts. Tomorrow's a long day, I've been told, and it's also the final day. So we are gonna make it to the coast tomorrow and get on the, Christian's gonna drive on the beach and I'm gonna be there in the passenger seats yelling and cheering, presumably, or just saying, hey, that's awesome. And I uh, can't wait for tomorrow. I'll talk to you guys later. There's genuinely nothing else like it. it this is gonna be a very interesting segment that the Rivian is kind of creating. It is a premium tweener size EV super truck. That thing blew my mind. I mean, the range is, I, it taught me that you don't really genuinely need more than 300 miles if you're taking it easy and you're willing to plan a little bit on your route. I am so excited to see what comes next. It's gonna be genuinely incredible. I just have the best time with this thing. I don't think the fact that we've made it from coast to coast has really sunk in yet, even as we sit freezing here in, uh, in Oregon, but um, I'm, I'm proud of our team for doing it, and I'm proud of, uh, yeah, I'm proud of our team for doing it, and I'm uh, excited for what this means for Rivian, too. This trip certainly gave me a larger respect for electric vehicles. I was before was under the belief that there was very few electric cars or vehicles that have any sort of character remotely close to even a okay gas car, just because of the innate differences between gas and electric powertrain. If you were somebody like, or are somebody like I was with EVs, Go try Rivian, or don't. If you don't like the Rivian, who cares? Go, go, drive, uh, go drive a Tesla, go drive a Taycan. I know they're expensive, but I'm just saying,
get out there, try them out. You might, you might surprise yourself, maybe you'll confirm your bias. Give it time. The automotive enthusiast world is not ending. Um, there's still hope for doing what you love with cars in the near future. You know, just because the way we power our vehicles is changing, it doesn't mean the things we like to do have to go away. You know, I love to travel off-road, I love to go on road trips, I love to, you know, explore. Never once in the past 5,000 some odd miles ran out of charge. We never once, you know, had trouble finding a charger. We had trouble charger issues, sure, but, you know, this was quite painless in all honesty. I think it speaks a lot to the electric vehicle technology as it is today and, uh, you know, where it's going in the future. I do know the future is scary for a lot of people who love you know, internal combustion engines as I do, but I don't think we need to necessarily shy away from it because it can be quite cool and quite the experience. Here, the backs of my legs, there's so much sand blowing, it feels like I'm getting sand blasted or power or media blasted the back of my legs. So now they're getting out the max track boards and airing down the tires to try to get the truck out so we can drive back up. There you go, there you go, there you go. Off road auto, everything uh, else. We're all set. Ride stiff? Yeah, yeah. we're all set. Finally. <laughs> yes, heads up. Thank God, that sucked. Proud of you guys. Team, made it back. team effort. <laughs>